Takes a block, the kicker to beat. Inside of him, he, he's got the speed. He's going to go all the way. Pressure comes. They get to him. He's down the back of the 22-yard line. No big rub. Block. It was blocked. Touchdown, Oregon. Oregon football with Mike Pilotti. Back to throw the ball. Rolls all the way to the right. Throws it down. It is tipped and intercepted at the one-yard line by Aaron Gibson. A one-handed ball was tipped up into the air. He went up and grabbed it. Oh, what a play by Gibson. And I concur with Jerry Allen. What a great play by Aaron Gibson. A great day by the Oregon defense and a great win for the Oregon football program. Joe Johnsante along with head coach Mike Bellotti. And coach, that was thorough. Thorough win. Maybe in the last two minutes, but other than that, a thorough victory over Arizona. Yeah, it was a great job by our kids, both offensively and defensively. And special teams came to play, too. I, I was very pleased. Uh, you know, when you, when you let the two scores go at the end of the game, I think that's frustrating, but we were trying to play everybody. We wanted those young, men, young ducks to step up in a sense. Uh, I thought we had dominated the game up to that point and uh, probably should have been more points on the board. We had some questionable calls and we had some problems hanging on the football and problems with penalties again. But overall, another great win to get back in this conference race and to take the next step. Defense played great, no question about that. But Arizona, not one of the best offensive teams you'll face. Other, other side of the ball, though, offense, I thought, just picked up right where they left off. Very efficient and very good yesterday. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch the offense go in terms of uh, continuing the, the, the rhythm, the confidence that they had last week, uh, born of that fourth quarter rally against Washington State. I think they started off very first drive, took it right down the field and scored. That was huge. Kellen showed great touch overall throwing the football, distributed the ball to his receivers well. Terrence started off running very hard and very strong. We didn't need him as much this game. Uh, but we still average, uh, got almost 500 yards. And again, I, I think that should translate to more points. So you get it back to 500, 2 and 1 of the Pac 10. There's a log jam. There's like eight teams at 2 and 1. You're right in it. Here yeah, we are. Six I, games in, you're right in it. I believe so. And I, I really thought we talked about this. We haven't dug ourselves that deep a hole because no, no matter what we did in the non conference, the conference schedule is what counts. And this is important for us to understand that we're back in this thing. We have one loss. I don't think the conference champion will be undefeated, but you never know. It gives us a chance to make this thing interesting. If the conference champion is is undefeated and it's USC they're going to the Orange Bowl so that means that maybe the Rose Bowl is out there for the second place team as well so and you're tied for second right now in the Pac-10 it's going to be a great race and a great game yesterday at Autzen 58,000 as we go to the highlights again the crowd I thought the crowd was maybe a little quiet to start the game trying to get themselves going I, fooled by the early start maybe yeah they came on when they needed to at the end I, I felt like again you know when we take it down the field and score I think that extra quiets the crowd down they got they have to be excited about something very first play we get Tim Day involved a little screen to him does a great job and again rarely goes down by one guy trying to tackle him. another look at it coach and uh, was that a conscious thought hey we're gonna get to throw it to Tim Day first play of the game well it was just a way we wanted to start the game and again that wasn't we thought it wasn't get the ball Tim, but it worked out well that way. And again, it's just a play we thought that complemented the running game well. 19 yards to the 33-yard line, and then you start working Terrence Whitehead a little bit. He's going to pick up nine yards here. He's just picking them up in big chunks. Yeah, and again, the line, there's a huge hole there, and Terrence is getting very good at seeing those holes and setting up the blockers and the whole deal. I'm very pleased again with that evolution of the running game. Terrence for another three, a little penalty there, though as uh, we'll talk a lot about penalties as we go on. Not too much, but it's certainly part of the game yesterday. And then Demetrius Williams, look at that move. Just uh, working to get the first down and gets it. Yeah, nice job. And again, we got Demetrius involved early. He does a nice job here in terms of catching the football and then making the first guy miss. Another job. We're just getting the ball again. They were playing off coverage a little bit. Gave us some opportunity to get the ball to him underneath. Into Arizona territory. Terrence on third and three picks up the first down. And then Oregon back to the air. A little motion from him and back and a play fake to throw. Kellen straight drop back over the middle. Wide open catch made. First down and Marcus Maxwell inside of the 20 to the 18 yard line. Marcus again. Nice play action again. Freeze the line and, and freeze the backers underneath. You can see again good protection. Allows Kellen to set his feet. Throw the ball right on the money to Marcus Maxwell down the field there. Does a nice job. Securing the football, making the first guy miss, almost again gets up and gets going. Hey, how well is Kellen throwing the ball? It would have hit him in the head if he yeah. wouldn't have caught it. <laughs> He's throwing the ball very well. Has a lot of confidence. Nice touch on the screen pass to Terrence again. Uh, they did a nice job because I thought he might score on that play, but they recovered well. Seven yards there. It's looking to be a real good drive. And here's a uh, little pitch to the outside. Terrence again working, working inside the five-yard line. And then a controversial play coming up here. Clemens. Goes back, looks like he's going to be able to walk in the end zone, but runs into his own guy. Ball comes out, they get it, 
And uh, I don't know if it would have been marked there a touchback, but uh, Mike Stoops went absolutely crazy on this play. Yeah, I, I thought he actually scored. I thought the ball broke the plane of the end zone. I, again, I couldn't see it in the replay here. I think the ball comes out, obviously. Our, it's a pass play, so again, our lineman's just waiting there. But again, ball's out before he crosses the plane right there. It's a fumble. That's a poor call. And again, that's one of the problems without having instant replay. You never know. And here's Stoops on the field. I'm surprised he didn't get thrown out of the game. But I will say that, hey, it seems like the last 10 calls have gone against you. It's about time. Maybe to get one, but well, they even out. And there were a couple later on that, that evened up for that one, believe me. So next play after Stoops blew a gasket, Terrace Whitehead goes over the top for the touchdown, and it's seven to nothing. Great try. Nice job again. Nice job by the line there. Nice job by Terrence. You can see again. I assume we're going to see this from ground angle, mm -hmm. but uh, you can see the right side just wipes out that side and. Good kick out block by Aaron Renault, so he goes over the top, untouched in the end zone. 12 plays, 86 yards, 515 to open the game. Well, that's what you want, isn't it? Exactly. Come right out and take time off the clock, get a touchdown. Take it right at him. Heavner for the Arizona Wildcats, and uh, they were pretty much stopped, but they got a pass interference here, so they get to keep the ball. Otherwise, it would have been a punt situation. Yeah, and, and you know, that was the same play. We got tripping from behind, going for the football uh, again. Unfortunately here, great play by Mike Bell. We get caught up in pursuit, don't get back. And again, he does a nice job here. We recover to get him out and save a huge play. Now 30 yards for Bell on that play. And then right here, Harris is going to take it on the draw and get 25 yards. Coach, that was basically half their total offense for three quarters of play, those two runs. Yeah, and again, our, our defense really played well overall. Those two plays, the one was just an over-pursuit type play. Nice job of tackling there, Bart. Our guys in a crucial situation down inside the 10 yard line. Bell for three, and then Hevener looking for McCray. He gets it to him for four yards. He goes out of bounds at the three yard line. Sets up a fourth and two from the three. Cats decide to go for it. Defense again, coach here coming up big. Nice play. Yeah, it's a great play. Again, Jerry Madsen comes over. I would, wish he would have intercepted that ball simply because we'd had it at the 20 instead of at the 2. But again, great play by the defense. Keep him out of the end zone. Another look at Jerry Madsen, who's just been solid for you all season long. Yeah, doing a great job. This is a very instinctive play because he's drifting. He feels like it's not a run. It's right in that throwing lane. And then, not sure why he didn't use his other hand and catch that football, but... Uh, well, he, he is a linebacker. That's true. There's a reason for that. <laughs> nice play, though, by Jerry Madsen. Oregon starting deep in their own territory, but coming right out and uh, throwing the ball out of the end zone and getting some breathing room, Keith Allen. Yeah, nice job. Again, nice job protection-wise. Nice job by Kellen getting to his third receiver. And then Clemens looking to Demetrius. This was a third and four play for nine yards. Continues the drive. Yeah, that was a big-time catch and throw. Perfectly only where he could catch it. You know, get Demetrius one-on-one -on -one the open field. Good ball security and making sure he makes the first guy miss. Nine yards there was a promising drive, but a penalty again. This is a personal foul. After the play, they brought it back. And so that pretty much kills the drive at that point. Yeah, and, and we do not hold up in protection. That was a stupid and selfish personal foul. I saw it, and I'm very frustrated by it. And again, that's one of the ones I'll make a huge issue about for the team. Cats take over. And they start to run the football. Henry for three yards on the play. And then Aaron Gibson. Well, then Aaron Gibson starts his big day. Two backs to side, deep in the throw, step back, pressure comes, throws it deep, and this one could be in, it is intercepted. Aaron Gibson with a pick, his second of the year. He had a field blitz on here, and again, we put pressure on the quarterback. Aaron dropped back from his cornerback position. You see the pressure by Anthony Trucks right there. And this ball is overthrown slightly. He makes a here Justin either one could have probably intercepted it. Great job by Aaron. He's just become a ball hawk out there. Hey, he's playing great. Your corners. I mean, maybe the best you've had in now in three years, huh? Well, I think that we're playing the most solid right now. Great catcher by Dante. Uh, couldn't quite get on track. I think he's going to have a chance to get more yardage there. That'd make this tough shoestring catch. Nine yards there. And then on third and six, Rosario on this other side maybe gets a little ahead of the blocker and picks up five. Sets up a fourth and one at midfield. Confidence in your defense, coach. So say, hey, let's go for it. Absolutely. Uh, confidence in our offense and our defense. And again, unfortunately, we fumble the ball away, which it, it's tough enough when you you run the, you call a fourth down play. When you don't even get a chance to run and see if it'll work, that's very frustrating. And that's one of those oops, and that's the quarter. Oregon leading at 7-0. to zero. But I think anybody at the game can see right now that if you don't make a lot of mistakes, you're going to be able to control the game and win it. 
Absolutely. We're a better team. And I, I said that at that point in time. I, I reminded our team about that. Again, we had broke ourselves down either via penalties. We had the first drive in, did a nice job on defense to keep them out, but needed more. And I, again, sort of a frustration building that we are, again, our own worst enemy. All right. Coming up next, the Cats threaten a little bit in this one, but again, the Ducks coming up with big plays on the defensive side of the ball. None bigger than the one by Aaron Gibson, the one we showed you at the start of the show. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti rolls on right after this. this hey everyone and welcome back to Oregon football with Mike Bellotti, Joe Johnsante and the coach with you as we go right to the second quarter highlights. Oregon leading this one seven to nothing in this football game and it starts out Ducks with it and just like the start of the first quarter Second quarter starts with a great day. And Clemens going to go back and play fake bright. Pressure comes. Nice fake. Now we'll throw it downfield. And it's caught. Oh, Tim David, a great catch. And then run after he gets hit and down. And on did he take a shot. Two big time plays in that. First of all, Kellen Clemens buys a lot of time here. This is a play action fake. You see again, we're going to try and throw the ball a little bootleg, get it to Dante. Great job getting the D end up in the air and then running down. Throwing the ball to the field, a little overthrow. Great catch by Timmy. He takes a heck of a hit right there and luckily just keeps on running. And 20 is a great football player. Lamont Means is a, is a great player, and I tell you, he continues to just make, amaze me. Good gut buster there. That was almost a great catch right there by Maxwell. Yeah, I wish he'd hang on to that one again. Uh, didn't quite, so we have to punt it. Ducks have to punt. So David Dittman, who had a very good day, Coach, and uh, this one worked out pretty well, too. Yeah, we're a little bit fortunate here, but David hit the ball much better. Great coverage by Witherspoon and Pacinger. And again, the, the end zone doesn't matter. As long as the ball doesn't cross the plane, you can stand anywhere you want. But David improved uh, on this day. He hit the ball very well, consistently. Again, you see again, Brian Pacinger right there forces the guy to not catch the ball, doing a great job. Spoon comes from behind the other duck that we have and again does a great job if it slid in the other with the ball it would have counted but he can leave it there pushed it back great play he did a good job i thought he was going to get it and slide yeah, and he yeah. let go of it so good job there and uh they start with the football and harris for four yards and then harris for six more they got a little breathing room here but that's really all they got so they have room to punt and uh danny bauer sends this one out justin finnessy coach it looks clear that you've settled now on a punt returner I think so. I, I was pleased. You know, Justin wasn't available to us early in the season. He's a veteran at it. Did a nice job yesterday. He, he just has the courage to go vertically, and he's making good decisions. We also have changed the guys on the outside to protect him, and I think that's made a difference. Start at the 37. Terrence for four yards on the play, and then five more coming up here on third and five as he gets just to the first down marker. And then Kevin Clemens going to pick up eight more. So again, just working your way right on down the field. Yeah, and running the football, doing a nice job. I like the third and sixth call. I think, again, that was, that was huge uh, just for us to show we can run the ball in that situation. Demetrius, nice move inside for five more yards. And then Chris Vincent getting some time. Yeah, we have a couple plays designed for him out of the one back and a couple others. Nice job here running. Again, I, I like the physical nature. I think he might have scored if he just decided to run around there, but really nice job of lowering his pad. Another look at it from the other end zone here, Coach, and it looks like it's open if he comes towards us here, but still a good hard run. Yeah, he just, again, I think wants to make a statement. That's his style of running, and it'll complement the others. Then Dante Rosario took it down to the one, and Terrence Whitehead takes it in for the touchdown from one yard out. So, uh, boy, the uh, partner in the backfield, three touchdowns for Terrence on the day. Nice day for him. Yeah, did a nice job, and again, come up big here. Nice job kicking out by Ian Reynoso right there. Nice job by our right side of the line. And again, nice hold. Terrence does a nice job navigating, getting in the end zone. 14 nothing. That short field sure is nice, isn't it? It is. That punt return made a big difference. Hevener to step toe. Great catch for 16 yards on that play. Just give the guy credit. Tip your cap. Then Bell for seven. Uh, your team has done well against Mike Bell every year that you've played at Arizona. Yeah, I think we've held him in check for the most part. That one run he had was really about the most damage he did all day. Hevener had a no gain and then another Big time catch right there on fourth down. Johnson, a great catch. So they got it going. Hevener to step toe, looking downfield, and he gets it down to the the uh, about the 23 yard line on that play. And they're just moving it down, coach. This is their best drive of the day. Yeah, they made some plays. That was a great play by Jackie Bates here. Unfortunately, Jackie gets blocked. They get outside, get the ball down inside the five. Step toe down to the five yard line. Cats with a good drive, threatening to cut the lead in half, but. 
intercepted. A great interception by Eric Gibson. A great play by Gibson. Big time play. Really, the guy who started this play is Anthony Trucks. He gets under the route. He's coming. Just a three-level play action. See Aaron get over the top of that guy. AT taps the ball up right there. Tip drill. Aaron comes through. Out jumps the guy. One hand catch. Great play. Which might have stayed in the end zone. But again, went out the one yard line. Great play again. Big time turnover. So that stopped the Cats. They had two opportunities to get a couple of touchdowns, but your defense kind of that bend but don't break attitude, I guess, if you will. Even though they didn't have a lot of yards, that doesn't really fit. But on those two drives, it did. It did. And, they, and again, we the biggest thing is keeping them out of the end zone. Yards really don't matter. A lot of yards, a little yards, it really doesn't matter if you keep them out of the end zone because it's points that beat you. And that's a forced turnover, a tip and a great play. So we talk about playmakers. That was it right there. That, that takeaway again by Aaron. We had another one later in the game by Jackie Bates. We talked about our corners earlier. I'm very pleased that Jackie took a huge step up. Aaron continues to be the guy we thought he would be, and I'm pleased with their play. All right, coming up at the half, Ducks, of course, leading it 14 to nothing. The only thing holding them back from big-time moments like this one coming up here is the old hanky. We'll talk about that. Also, one of the all-time Oregon greats finds himself back on the playing field. That and more coming up next on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm Michael Burke. Now, each week, the Oregon football team invites some former players back to be the honorary captain. But this week's captain, a little extra special. Our own Anthony Newman, who co-hosts Game Day with Joe and serves as the analyst on Oregon football telecast. You should know that Anthony was one of the best defensive players ever to play at Oregon. First team all Pac-10 selection when he played in the mid-1980s. There were games that Anthony won almost by himself, like the 10-7 win over Colorado to open up the 1987 season. After his Oregon career, he played 12 years in the NFL and is actively helping children in the state through the Anthony Q. Newman Foundation. And for Anthony being on the field before a game, well, that made him want to go suit up. This is ex excitement for me because I get to come down on the field with 60,000 fans. I haven't done that in four years, and so I'm a little excited right now. I'm a little, uh, my, 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 my nerves, nerves are going 100 miles an hour because I want to play and not talk about the game. But this is an honor. Uh, you know, I thought uh, uh, it, this would happen 20 years down the line, and it's happened in four years after I got out of the league. Uh, this, is, this is just a, a really a delightful time for me. Couldn't have happened to a better guy. Meanwhile, as much as you'd all like to forget the Indiana game that opened the season, on that show, we showed you that Peter Jacobson was taping his program for the Golf Channel, plugged in with Peter Jacobson. At the game, we also told you that when it came out, we'd let you know. Well, here it is. This ran across the country last week and has some more airings this weekend. Jake, a great Oregon alum and donor, and his guy Greaser had a great time inside the stadium and really showed off what a duck football Saturday looks like to the rest of the country. They also had a great gag. There's a video game called Peter Jacobson's Golden Tea, and they have it at the cooler in Eugene. And they hooked up a hidden camera and microphone, and Peter himself talked to the players of the game while they were playing. Customized game experience, if you will. Jacobson tried to give the show a golf spin, but really to no avail. This was all about Oregon football. And as Oregon game days are becoming pretty famous for the great atmosphere, more and more celebrities, if you can call them that, are taking in duck games. This week, it's Joe Kahn, a retired New Orleans chef, who calls himself the first professional tailgater. That's all he does. Just drives his 40-foot Monaco coach around the country and goes to tailgate parties. He's got some corporate sponsors to fund his party time. He even served out some jambalaya to the folks that wandered by his party. But mostly, he just self-invited himself to everyone else's. Kahn has been to every NFL stadium and more than 50 college stadiums, and he says Austin's tailgate scene is among the best he's ever seen. Not a bad way to make a living. All right, and that brings us on to this week's internet poll. Ducks hit the road this week, not for a party, but for some business. And we hear so much about Austin being the toughest place to play. So today, without Austin as a choice, which stadium do you think is the toughest to play in? This week at Stanford or any of these other stadiums around the conference, perhaps Reister or Husky stadiums? Coliseum or the Rose Bowl. Go to chambersports.com to place your vote. And you can also get there by going to the website of our flagship station, KZI.com. Click on sports or OSN and place your vote. All right, when we come back, it's back to the action in the third quarter, and Terrence Whitehead continues his breakout season into the end zone three more times against the Cats. Joe and the coach with that and more when Oregon football with Mike Pilati continues right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. Oregon football with Mike Milani. A blustery October day, but yesterday a beautiful day for football. Uh, perfect conditions. Great day. Great temperature. Sun tried to come out the end. Just a great day for football. No real wind at all to speak of. And uh, Arizona starting with the ball. And Bell for four yards. Jerry Matson brings him down. And then at this point, I thought Coach... Haloti really started to assert himself. Well, he really did. I think he got stronger as the game went along. He's a big, strong, physical guy. He can wear on opponents, certainly in the second half. Cats have to punt the ball after the first series. Back at his 25. That was a pretty good punt. Takes it there. Finnessy, a lot of room up the middle. He could go all the way. At the 40, one man to beat. The 30, the 20, a little hesitation, and a touchdown. Unfortunately, this gets called back, as you can see. Justin put Ryan shot in a very difficult situation. The punter does a great acting job here of stopping and sort of allowing himself to get blocked. And again, I think Justin should have just kept his speed up, trusted his speed, gone through it, put Ryan in a very difficult situation. You can see there, what do I do? I don't, can I block him, not block him? But again, nice job, great field position created by that. Kellen Clemens takes it, starting at the 22-yard line for three yards, and then Terrence Whitehead for 11 yards inside the Arizona 10-yard line. And this one, well, after we see it again, Coach, he's going to finish the job, but a good hard run. Yeah, he, he's doing a great, that's great hole there. You can see again, when a back can get three or four yards down the field, full head of steam, they're tough to bring down. That's a great job of line blocking. Excellent motion all the way to the left. Handed to Whitehead again inside to the six, five, four, three, two, spin and touchdown, Terrence Whitehead. Boy, is that a great run? That is a I, great I just run. Tell you, that's breaking three or four or five tackles. And carrying really guys. Yeah, and, and having to start and I mean stop and restart. He gets sort of stopped right here, runs in the back of the pile, bounces outside, makes a guy miss, runs through a tackle, another tackle right there, two more guys right there, spins off, drags them, drives into the end. Just tremendous. I mean, I, that fires me up. 15 carries, 74 yards. That should do it as well because he has been so good all year. Oregon's offense balanced. Defense now coming to play. This is Haloti just dominating the third quarter. Yeah, as we talked about, Haloti certainly, he not only can do it from tackle to tackle, he can go sideline to sideline. And also starting to get pressure, just pushing guys out of the way. Yeah, again, I think that uh, we wore them down a little bit. I think they got a little discouraged that third touchdown. You know, 21 nothing mm -hmm. makes it tough. And then another look at the pressure coach, just getting to the quarterback and what that does. A big Haloti there, Robbie Valenzuela. The pressure almost got to him there, coach, but it does on this one. The snap and brought the throw. Steps up, pressure, hit, and boom! Is he going down back inside the 25-yard line? Well, great job. Again, our two inside guys working together, and they split it. And the nice thing is Robbie splits it to allow Haloti to get in there, and Robbie gets in on the sack, too. And those two guys, great job. Again, we're starting to wear them down. Constrict that pocket, which makes it tough on the quarterback. Robbie still got there, even though there was a double team. And then Terrence Whitehead breaks this one outside after the punt. Offense continues to move the football a little bit, and uh, then they get a big one. The receivers are in tight. Clements back to throw the ball. Looks, looks down the middle, and it is caught. Demetrius gets outside of the 40 with some speed to the 30. He chased at the 20 and then out of bounds. Finally up at about the 16 to mark it at the 17-yard line. First of all, it's a perfect play call for the defensive structure that they had. We're sending Demetrius down the middle. Great job of protection. Great job by Kellen setting his feet, stepping in, delivering the ball. Perfectly thrown pass. Perfect rack catch. Again, Demetrius, great job here. Off to the races, trusting his speed. Big time play. Again, would have hit him in the head. Perfect throw. Nine catches, 153 yards for Demetrius. That's 21 catches in the last two games. Down to the Arizona 17-yard line. Rosario for two yards here. And, uh, after a loss, it'll be third and 11, and this drive kind of breaks down here, Coach, but still, the offense playing at a very high level. The only thing stopping the offense is the offense itself. Yeah, we just, uh, again, come up there. We get a couple plays. We're almost ready to break it. Fourth and one comes up. Fourth and one. Going to go for it, and another oops. Kellen said that would have been a touchdown. It, well, I don't know if it had been a touchdown. It would have certainly been a first down because the back was open. But the problem, again, that cannot happen on a fourth down play. I've already said that we're, we've been a great team this year on fourth down. We were horrible, absolutely horrible. We didn't give ourselves a chance, which is frustrating. Cats take over. More Haloti. One yard on that, and he's just... 350 pounds, he runs like he's 180 pounds. He, he's got, uh, he's playing with better pad level. He still can improve that. Again, 
He says he's so big and so strong, he can afford to stand up, but we got to get him down even lower. Bates and Matson were there. Haloti involved in that last tackle. And then Hebner scrambling, and he uh, picks up 14. That's their first first down of the third quarter. That was a nice scramble. He did a nice job on that play. Then they go back and the incomplete to Jefferson right here. Jackie Bates in coverage. Jackie Bates was around, he was around as a receiver like in his hip pocket all day. Did a nice job. That was perfect timing. Come around and knock the ball down. And then, guess who? Haloti again. Gets off the ta up the block and makes the tackle. Coach, he had seven tackles in the third quarter. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Again, he, he just did a great job of reading the plays and going down the line of scrimmage, making plays all over the field. 21 to nothing. And, and talk about defensive line-wise. The defensive linemen are just there to occupy people, right? So to have seven tackles in a quarter? Absolutely. That, that's pretty amazing because their job is to basically stay in gaps, occupy linemen, not allow linemen to get up to the next level. Our linebackers and safeties are designed to make the tackles in this defense. And when a defensive lineman does make tackles, they're not only keeping their holding their gaps, but they're, again, keeping the arm free and making plays. And that's that's a difficult thing to do. 21 nothing. Ducks with this one firmly in hand. Mm -hmm. It sure doesn't hurt to have Kellen Clemens and Demetrius Williams keep it that way. The smooth operation with another big one against Arizona. Ducks on their way to victory as Oregon football with Mike Bellotti continues right after this. And welcome back to the show, everyone. Joe Johnsanti along with Oregon head coach Mike Bellotti after a big victory over the Arizona Wildcats, moving to 2-1 and one in the Pac-10. Here we go, fourth quarter. Ducks forced a quick three and out, looking for the knockout punch. Comes the throw, backside this time. Going deep, Demetrius is there, and he makes the catch! A great catch by Demetrius Williams! Good job again, initially by our protection, play fake. Good job for Kellen to be able to step up in the pocket. Nice touch on this ball. Puts it right where Demetrius can catch it. Great job of going up, battling the defender. Highest point catch, which is awesome. And then continues, almost breaks this thing, just gets tripped up. Fontenot is right on him. And uh, nice job by Demetrius Williams. So right on down there again. And then Clemens, little delay, nine yards. Takes it down to the eight-yard line. Nice play. Yeah. That, again, a designed run for the quarterback. And we have several of those in the offense. Crazy play here. This one to Washington. He goes down. The ball comes out. Clearly there are guys on the ground. He's just going to go to the sideline. Then he decides to run to the end zone and the referees didn't know what to call. Well, the problem is I think the ground caused the, uh, the fumble, uh, which is not a fumble. And again, I think I saw this from several angles. He picks it up. He's on the ground when he picks it up. You see that too. Uh, it's a difficult play. Again, right here, Hard. His yeah. knee might have been down. Pretty yeah, close. Hard to tell. Yeah, hard to tell what happened. Got to have ball security. Again, all balls out. No, you're right. It is ball right there. He's down on the ground on his knees. But it was kind of funny that he would just run into the sideline to celebrate with the guys. And then the coach said, well, just keep going. Yeah, and well, the referees didn't blow a whistle. And I would have said that too, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so anyway, they start deep in their own territory. Having trouble really doing much because there's a Lodi making trouble. And the linebackers getting into the action as well. And uh, again, your defense playing pretty well, and they're going to get another one. The snap, back off the play fake to throw. Way downfield, got a man, but he's going to way overthrow him, and it is intercepted at the 45-yard line by Jackie Bates. Nice job in coverage by Jackie Bates. I'm not sure if their quarterback wasn't just throwing this one away because he thought the guy was covered. Uh, they do a decent job. We get a little bit of pressure, not enough, though. Ball's thrown downfield. Jackie just continues to track it. Makes a great diving catch for the interception. And uh, awesome. He played a great football game, and that certainly capped it off. Did he play well enough to solidify himself as the starter at corner? Uh, yes, I believe so. Clemens to Whitehead. Picking his way through. And uh, penalty on this one, so it brings it back. A clipping on that one, Coach. Let's talk about the penalties a little bit here. Yeah, actually, that play I disagree with. That was not a clip. He strikes him across the front of the knee. Guy falls forward. Uh, you can't see it right here. Uh, but nice job by Kellen. Nice job by Terrence in terms of this play. Penalties are a problem, though. I'll tell you what, I'm tired of defending our team. Uh, I'm going to go on the attack in terms of it. we got to eliminate it. Throws it down there, and it's... Is it caught? The sandwich catch! I'll tell you what, this is a nice throw by Kellen, but this is a tremendously courageous, unbelievable catch. Gets the first down, catches it, gets hit, 
makes a slight sign there that could have been flagged, <laughs> but again, after that play, I'd give it to him too. Marcus <laughs> Maxwell, great job. Great catch. I said the sandwich catch, a little piece of bologna inside that sandwich there as he really took a hit. And Oregon moving the ball now here. Tim Day, the big fella, for 11, and then he goes right back to him. Yeah, wants to throw down the middle out. Pressure comes, gets away from it, throws it down, wide open. Tim Day grabs, and Adam Adams at a five-yard line. Yeah, good job by Kellen actually buying a little bit of time. We don't quite hold up protection-wise as much as we'd like right there in his face. Judging Jeff Schwartz in protection. But Kellen, nice job throwing it out there. Tim, nice catch, extension. Just couldn't quite turn that corner and get in the end zone. One big fella gets the 28-yard game. The other big fella gets the touchdown. Rosario, wide head. And back to throw from it. Step throw to the right-hand corner. It is caught, and it'll be the touchdown. Dante Rosario. Boy, is that a nice throw and catch. Nice touch by Kellen Clemens. Puts it over the top where only Dante can catch it. Dante, great leaping, two-handed catch. Brings his feet down in the end zone. And you can see it here. Perfect job. Taps the feet down. Nice job. And the knockout blow delivered. The touchdown. Kellen has 11 straight games with a touchdown pass. That's one away from the Oregon record, believe it or not. And uh, he can break Jason Fife's record next week or tie it next week against Stanford. Nice touchdown saving tackle by Ryan DiPaolo here. Yeah, Ryan's been a good job, done a good job for us on special. He's very disappointed in our coverage on that kick. That, that bothered me a great deal because uh, we got the perfect timing on the uh, ground kick that we wanted and it disrupted their timing. This didn't work for us. A little garbage time here, Coach, and they uh, have a little bit of success. Some good defensive plays as well as you have the backups in. I would call it penalty here roughing the passer. Yeah, and again, I you know, it's very difficult. Some guys getting their first chance to play extended periods of time and trying to make a play, but you got to stay within the rule. And you see all those guys on the sideline, the starters, like, we want the shutout, but it was not meant to be. They get into the end zone, and uh, as a team, it's just kind of one of those fun things, right? Let's get the shutout, because you know you're going to get the victory. Absolutely. I, I think, again, that's a huge pride thing for the defense. Special teams, a little work on the... Uh, Onside kick, they just they did a good job executing. Did a nice job, and we had it in our hands, couldn't hang on to it. They got it. That's that's the trouble. Onside kicks now are such a scary deal because it, it really is just the bounce of the ball. And they just uh, worked the ball down the field. They're going to get another touchdown here in garbage time. But, uh, you know, when you look at this and you see some of the guys that haven't gotten to play, it, it's a big adjustment for them, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It, it, it changes things. And, again, they got to make sure they maintain their emotions. There's a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, excessive uh, prolonged celebration, which again, you can't do. No, look at it, coach. And I, I, I thought, hey, this is just like when we were little kids and we'd go out and the Mack truck would come by and you'd want him to blow his horn. Anthony Truck's doing his little blow the horn thing, and that's 15 yards. Yeah, absolutely. He knows that. We know that. Uh, that, that bothers me again. I want to talk about it. So they get the nice catch into the end zone for the touchdown, makes it 28 14, but Oregon gets the onside kick. And you start to put this one away, coach, as you go to the run. Ryan Shaw. And there is Shaw again. Trying to bounce to the outside and does. Down the sideline, 30. Inside of Adam Adams at the 20 yard line. He stayed inbound. He stayed inbound. Great job by Ryan Shaw. Not just running the football. Good job blocking here. I mean, this is he just runs through the one guy. But then a veteran back, knowing we're running out the clock, stays inbounds to keep the clock running. Ducks win this one 28-14. They dominated the whole thing despite a few mistakes here and there. Nearly 500 yards of offense. Those are the Oregon Ducks, the actual Oregon Ducks expected to see from day one. I think we're getting into a little bit of a rhythm right now. A lot of guys we had injured uh, that were either adjusting to them being injured or are stepping up and getting out of those injuries. Um, Terrence White, for one, has run the ball very, very effectively. Uh, Demetrius has stepped up the last couple games. Tim Day, we're getting him more involved in the offense. It's just it's been a whole nother, another deal for us, really. Uh, this guy's making great throws. He's uh, relaxed. He's making just making great reads, and coaches calling great plays. And um, as we see, I feel it's my duty, I guess, to hold up the other end and catch the ball. So, I mean, uh, there's nothing much you can really has to do besides catch the ball and make it easy for me. Today we got a lot of breaks that we normally don't get, turnovers in the red zone. A lot of those things have been killing us, and we haven't been getting breaks that our opponents have, so that was huge for us today. And our offense is rolling, and, you know, we're back to 500, so we just got to keep moving. We just got to tighten some things up, you know. I, I've been talking all year about uh, everybody playing, you know, on the same page, and uh, I think that's what we did, you know. It's, it's not, it's not a question of like whether we have talent or schemes. It's just the fact that secondary linebackers and D-line all play together as a whole defense instead of like separate units. And I think that's what we did today. Definitely a confident group. I think we've always been confident. And, um, just got to go out there and play. Um, these receivers today, I mean, they weren't that good. And we 
But the thing about the Pac-10 is that anybody can beat you if you're not focused. So you just try to stay focused out there and just try to play them tough. It's, it's good to be on the side of the coin, you know. And <laughs> we've had our, I, I think, I hope we've had our fair share of bad bounces, and I hope we get a get back on the side of the lucky side and get some bounces going our way and make plays and you know just at least give it break even because lately it feels like you know it was up to battle but today it went a little better for us. Our aggressive, you know, we're playing a lot of aggressive. The offense moving the ball, defense doing good on defense. Even special teams showed up today. But uh, I mean, just as a whole, the, 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 I mean, you're taking the penalties and. But uh, we're gonna celebrate this win and, and go back to the practice field and, and worry about next game next week, Stanford. So, Coach, uh, is momentum overrated or underrated? Uh, neither. I think momentum is key. I, I think, again, it's confidence. And when you have it, you play with it. Performance breeds confidence. Confidence breeds better performance. And that creates momentum. And besides the penalties, I mean, generally, is this, would you say this is the best game your team has played this year? Um, yeah, yeah. It's except I, I, yeah, it's, it's hard. I still think we're a work in progress. I think we need to clean up. The penalty issues, obviously, ball security issues, obviously. Uh, we did a better job defensively, really, with the exception of the last two series, and again, of not giving up big plays, really playing bend but don't break defense, containing them. Uh, so I, I'm, I think we did some things on offense, defense, and special teams we can be very proud of. I think we've eliminated some problems. Some others continue to be there. Well, a great win to get back to 2-1 and one in the Pac-10 and right in the hunt, and a big one coming up down on the farm. The Stanford Cardinal are up next. We'll talk about that coming up next here on Oregon Football with Mike Vellotti. This is a different team than they were last year. And welcome back to the show, everyone. A little trivia question for you and for you too, Coach. What the heck? When's the last time Oregon played at Stanford? Uh... 1997. You got it. That's Is right. That right. That's well, right. That was a pure guess, I'll just tell you. 1997, a long time ago. Can you believe that? It's been that long. This Stanford team this year is much better than they were last year when you shut them out at Austin Stadium. Let's take a look at the Cardinal. And uh, they have Buddy Tevens has it going now, experienced quarterback. They're playing well. Yeah, they're playing much more physical brand of football, much more aggressive. Both sides of the ball. They had USC on the ropes. Trent Edwards has made a difference. He's healthy this year, playing well at quarterback. But their defense has improved. The entire team's improved. A little trickery as well as they beat the Cougars in Pullman, just like the Oregon Ducks did. And remember that goal line stand Oregon had a year ago against Stanford? Well, you would imagine that that's probably going to be fresh on their minds this week. I don't think you look for a moment. I think there's, there are occurrences during the course of time that you can reflect back on and say, hey, that really made a difference. Uh, but it's tough in the course of action. It happens, things go on, and uh, you, whatever the outcome is, uh, yeah, that's the result. But uh, you, you look for defining moments that a hey, big plays, uh, a big win, uh, end of the ball game type situation, because they can stimulate a, a, a feeling and intensity, uh, a sense of accomplishment that uh, you know, just the mundane things don't. No, I, I think in terms of execution, offensively, we need to do a better job. Uh, we've had difficulty throwing the ball successfully uh, in this conference. You need to throw the ball uh, to have success, and uh, Oregon's done a great job defensing. We've not done a, a very successful job. Coach Stevens talking about that moment last year. Really launched your team with that goal line stand. Well, that seven-play goal line stand, I mean, I don't think people understand how important mm -hmm. that is, how, how really unbelievable it is, but it, it buoyed our football team, not just the defense, but our entire football team, confidence and, and helped us get through the rest of the season. We'll be talking a lot about that this week as we get ready for a big one coming down at Stanford. When we return, inspiration can come in many forms, but it doesn't come in any clearer form than it does in Marjorie Wall. Inspiration that every single duck felt on Saturday. That and more coming up next on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. It's not often in life you find true inspiration, and even less often you uncover it on the football field. Marjorie Walt did, and you could say it saved her life. Eight years ago, Walt was diagnosed with cancer. The prognosis, a matter of months. But months slowly turned into years, and in between endless bouts of chemo and radiation, Marjorie has used the ducks to keep her fighting, to get to the next game, the next season, the next Oregon celebration. And so Autzen and the Ducks give you something to be inspired by. Inspiration is not confined to one side. It can spread much faster than the scourge of cancer, and it can't be stopped. 
Over the years, a friendship has developed between Marjorie and Mike Bellotti, with cards and gifts and letters being sent each way. Her strength, her courage has touched not just the coach, but this entire team. I say I think I can make it, and then I do it one day at a time, and then, you know, all of a sudden, the things that you thought were so important aren't important anymore. Life is just wonderful. I am a very lucky person. I am so lucky to be here. Officially, her doctors say, she's not supposed to be here. But Marjorie refuses to give up, and has found herself back for an odds on Saturday. And on this day, as she continues to battle for her life, each and every duck is given a moment of her tenacity, her courage, and her grace. Handshakes quickly turn to emotional embraces. It's impossible not to be touched by this woman whose body has been weakened by her fight. But she says she'd rather use what strength she has left to keep living than to feel sorry for herself or about the card she's been dealt. But Marjorie almost didn't make it to experience this special homecoming. I had to tell me finally that it's going to be two or four months. You know, what would you, what would you do? You know, what are you going to do? We have one radiation we can do, or you can go home and, and um, uh, spend it with your family. And I said, obviously, you haven't met my family, so I'll be doing radiation. <laughs> but we did, we did it, you know, and we made it. You know, I think we made it. Marjorie received her final dose of radiation on Friday and feels blessed to have her hero fighting for her on the sidelines. He gave me a lot of strength. He says, you know, he just goes in there and you fight. You fight, you know, just like he has his teeth to it. You never give up. You never give up. He is my hero. As long as Marjorie Wall, the real hero on this field, keeps fighting, so will the Ducks. A mutual feeling fostered by a team and a program that will always remember Marjorie Wall as her fight now becomes theirs. Margie <clears throat> told me she's going to be back next week and next year, so I, I'll trust you. She also sent me a rolling pin. I thought maybe Mary Brad, I think I'm going to use it on some of my kids about the penalties, <laughs> but she's a battler, she's a survivor, she's a tremendous role model for everybody in terms of getting things done. Everyone, we'll see you next week on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti.